everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Julianne. I'm a, the Assistant Director um, of Enrollment at the MBA Admissions Office at the Stanford Graduate School of Business. Um, today's session is going to focus on Brazil, but we know that there are many of you joining from all over the world. Uh, we have five fantastic alumni from Brazil who will be the main focus of today's event. So you'll get to hear from them. Um, again, this is really focused on the alumni experience, hearing their stories and not admission. So we have a ton of other events available, some that do focus specifically on admissions. And so I do encourage you to check those out as well because today is really going to be focused on the experience. So now I would like to shift gears a bit and I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. So for our panelists, I'd like you each to introduce yourselves and maybe we can just move um, in the order of the chart, starting with you, Mauricio. If you could share um, your name, where in Brazil you're from, and then um, any sort of, you know, industry, I know we kind of captured broad um, buckets here on our slide, but any sort of background information uh, you'd like to share. And then your favorite memory or favorite experience from the GSB. Perfect. Um, so my name is Mauricio. I was born in Brasilia, but I've been in Rio since I was about 13 years old. I consider Rio my hometown. Um, and I'm the perfect example of a career shifter because I graduated Comunicação Social with an emphasis in Publicidade e Propaganda, which is advertising basically and marketing. And um, I went to work in a, in a TV network. And kind of like the Brazilian ESPN. And after a few years, I realized I wasn't satisfied. So that's when I decided to apply for an MBA. And once I got there, it, was, it became very clear that I wanted to work with startups and technology. I think a lot of people that go to Stanford kind of find their passion for technology. Um, and I was, after I graduated and I was able to get into this industry, my first job after, after Stanford was as country manager for Viagogo a ticketing company, ticketing marketplace. And after three years doing that, I finally gained the confidence and the experience I needed to, to start my own company. So in 2017, I started Volanche, which is a e-commerce for used cars, basically, in Brazil. And, and that's what I've been doing ever since. So Stanford, the goal of getting my MBA was to shift my career, and Stanford did that and much more. Um, so I'm very satisfied with my career now. And the question was my favorite experience overall or academic or whatever? Overall, let's go with overall. Okay, so the trips, the, the trips, especially the student led trips. I, I went on three, Israel, China, and I led the Brazilian one. And I'll give you one example in Israel. We sat at a table with, you know, probably 25 students and, and Netanyahu, right? So. That's not something that happens every day that you can get to ask questions and, and talk. There's only a few other people in the room and you're having questions just like we're speaking here. So the trips are amazing and this specific trip was incredible. Okay, my turn. So my name is Erica. Um, I'm an MBA 14. Um, so I can't, I guess I can say I also shifted careers, but it wasn't that fast as Mauricio was. Um, so I worked in Itaú for about eight years before I went to the GSB. I was sponsored, so I got my MBA, came back to Itaú, and I worked there for a bunch of years. <laughs> so I left Itaú a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, after working for 14 years there. I was working with technology and digital. I always worked with innovation and, and that kind of stuff. And then when I came back, I, um, I started by building Itaú's uh, connection with startups. So I built Kubo. I, led Kubo for a while, I led their digital transformation, and then I started their um, department in financial products, in, sorry, in, in payments, in digital payments. And then about a year and a half ago, I decided it was time to change something. <laughs> I didn't know exactly what, but I, um, I also got pregnant and I decided it was time to change uh, careers and I wanted to go to a more digital company and I had always um, talked with the people in Quintanar because they're also Stanford uh, alums. So I always talked to Gabriel and Andrea about this and, and it's been, it had been a while since I started thinking about it. And 
I thought I wanted to change completely and go to HR because I thought HR was something that needed transformation. Not a lot of people knew how to do. Um, so I told Gabriel, hey, you know, thank you, but I, I want to be in HR. And he offered me the position to be the head of people in Quintandar. So here I am for the last year, actually. It was year, a year yesterday. Um, so it was a very, a pretty big shift by someone who's who graduating in Mathematica in, in Unicamp. Um, so I guess I chose to go to the GSB because I wanted to keep working with technology and because I didn't have all that background in, in management or anything because I was, I was, uh, I graduated in math, it was, it was, it was a very different background. Um, so I think Stanford gave me all that, that baggage and everything I needed, the expertise I needed to, um, do everything I did ever since I came back, but also learn about the technology and startup cosmology. So it was, um, I think it was it's hard to say one only memory. Um, I think I have too many. Um, I can say I met my husband, if it makes sense, but I'm not going to say that because it's like everyone says this is the only, you know, like people go there to get married, which I did, but that's okay. Um, so I think for me, it was really the people that was there. Like, in, and I agree with my use of the trips are great and academic, it was great too. But I think the most, the, the best part is actually being on campus and meeting everyone and, you know, and, and leaving your house and going to the talks and seeing everyone there. It didn't matter what time it was or what, it, what you were doing. You always met people and you could talk about anything you wanted. There were people doing all kinds of things in different countries everywhere. And for me, just being close to everyone and, and how much everyone was open uh, was the best thing. All right, so it's my turn now. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Elena. I'm an MBA. Uh, 2015. I currently work with innovation in the energy sector. I just kind of switch sectors. Um, after, well, I, I was in consulting before going to Just Be, and I knew that I wanted to do a career shift. So I went to the Just Be. My husband was also a student there, so that was a fun experience. Uh, we were already married before. And when I came back, to, to Brazil, I went to the Lemon Foundation. I was there for six years uh, um, and I just switched. Uh, there I started the internal VC that, that the foundation has, thinking about how to invest in technology in ad tech and how to uh, close the gap between those who have access to educational technology and those who haven't. Um, after that, uh, we actually bought uh, a startup and I joined the startup as head of people, finance, operations, uh, everything that wasn't product, I was the one doing it. And so after doing that for two years, I decided that I wanted to go to product and I switched moves inside a startup a little bit. I was head of product for about a year and I was invited uh, of, in the beginning of the year to join Votorenxin Energia that works with the energy sector uh, within a, a, a real challenge to understand that energy is not a commodity anymore and that what is happening is that the, the market is, get, is getting deregulated and people have to start, to, we have to start paying attention to our clients. So I thought that that was a nice challenge and I'm, they, I've been there for about three months now. And my favorite GSP, GSP experience, I think I'll have to agree with Mauricio, was like both leading the GST to Brazil in 2014 and going to the social trip innovation in India in which we tried to understand and really live the lives of people who are in the poverty line. That was a, a real game changer experience for me. And so I think that, that that's something I remind myself a lot. Great. So, hey, everyone, my name is Daniel. I'm an MBA from the class of 2019, so graduated last year. Um, my background is, is somewhat traditional within business. So I did engineering at uh, Scuola Politecnica, then did two years of investment banking and two years of, of private equity at Carlisle before going to uh, get my MBA at Stanford. And I think um, I didn't shift careers or shift sectors uh, as part of my MBA, but 
but I think a lot of the motivation that I had for, for going to uh, pursue my MBA was I realized during my time at Carlisle that, you know, what, what got me there wouldn't get me to the, to the next level. So until then, a lot of my work was focused on financial modeling, preparing presentations, uh, doing analysis. And I realized that, you know, to continue to advance in the career more and more, I'd have to rely on soft skills. So be able to convince an entrepreneur, a company owner to, you know, have a conversation with us and, and consider us as, as potential investors or influencing a, a company manager to think about strategy in, in a way that we thought uh, made more sense or, you know, recruiting and, and, and hiring and, and managing people in the team and make sure that they were motivated. So um, I really wanted to accelerate my path in learning and developing soft skills, which I thought an MBA would help me do it. And, and Stanford has a, a wonderful curriculum uh, in many ways, but, but I think with a, a very good emphasis in, in soft skills and I, I learned a lot uh, during my time uh, at the MBA on, on this um, set of skills. I'm happy to talk more about that during the Q&A portion. Um, and since I graduated, I, I came back to the team at Carlisle here in Sao Paulo that focuses in investments in, in South America. I think in terms of uh, favorite memories, uh, there are so many and I, I echo uh, many of the, the ones that were shared by, by the other panelists, but um, I'll, I'll talk about the trips as well, and, and in particular, the study trip that I co-led uh, to Brazil. And I think there's, there's just this moment when, by the end of the trip, you're having conversations with the 25 students, the, the 25 MBAs that came to visit your country, and they're telling you about how, you know, they had this image of what Brazil was like before coming in. Because of the trip, now they have such a more nuanced view of Brazil's challenges, but the opportunities, how there are exceptional business people doing amazing things here and, and just getting this sort of feedback from these, these people who will be amazing leaders and who didn't know Brazil very well before the trip, I think was just such a, a wonderful uh, moment. So this is a very strong memory that I have of my time at the GSP. Hi everyone, I'm Thais. Uh, I'm from the class of 2019. I'm from Salvador Bahia, Brazil. And um, when, before the GSP, I was working at a real estate development company. And when I graduated, I decided to stay in the United States for a little bit longer. So I worked for one year in a prop tech company in San Francisco. And I recently moved back to Brazil. So I'm working at um, a venture capital company uh, here in Brazil called Maya Capital that invests in early stage company in, in LATAM. And uh, I think uh, I echo all of the, the great experiences and moments that uh, my, my uh, fellow panelists shared here. So the relationships that we built with amazing people and also the trips and all the, the, the moments, that, the special moments that we had. Uh, but also I wanted to share about one favorite academic experience that for me was the Startup Garage class. Uh, it was a very uh, special uh, experience for me because it was very hands-on and for me that was like pivoting to, wanting to pivot to a new, a new career in, in tech. Uh, it was really good to have frequent interaction with mentors and also an amazing team of classmates. And uh, the class showed me the, the importance and, uh, of some frameworks and paths to start a company. So it was really interesting for me. Um, very special moment also at the GSP. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I'm gonna move into, there's already some great questions coming into the Q&A. So we're gonna move that way. Just a reminder, reminder to all our participants, um, scroll through the Q&A, see if there's any questions in there that you also have and use a thumbs up to upload it. So that way I know that those are the questions top of mind for folks. Um, so this question is actually coming from Camilla, and she would like to know if anybody took classes outside of the GSB, like at other schools at Stanford, and how was that experience, and how easy was it to have a multidisciplinary experience? And maybe one or two panelists can answer this. I have I have an interesting example. Um, I took public speaking with the engineering undergrads. And it's, it was interesting because engineers, as you know, don't really have the profile to, to public speak. Um, and so it was, it was very interesting because us as MBAs were trained and our previous careers kind of allow us to become good at public speaking. 
but, but, but a bunch of developers at Stanford who are very good at developing code aren't necessarily well trained to, to speak in public. And the experience of getting to know these people and, and helping them in some ways as they helped me and, and seeing what undergrad at Stanford is like, um, that was fascinating. It, it, I evolved as a public speaker, but I got to meet a ton of interesting people. And I think I became better at that specific skill because the people who are taking the class with me are so different. The background is so different and they're good at different things. It was very complimentary and I'm very glad I took that class. I, I can go. I, I took a bunch of classes at the D school because I worked with innovation and design thinking in Itaú before I went. So I, went, I really wanted to learn it better and, and, and come back um, to do that better. So I, I did a bunch of classes and it was really interesting because it was a mix of people from different schools, not only the GSP, not only engineering, but people from a bunch of places. And I took one that was very nice. That was, um, we had a group of four people, two of the uh, of their um, de design school fellows, which are a master's program that they do with very few people, and, and two of the GSB. And we were connected with a company and we had to solve a real problem. Ours was Dropbox. And we spent a quarter going to Dropbox with the guy who was the head of design and innovation of Dropbox, who was like the fourth employee of Facebook before that. And trying to understand and a problem and solving a problem with them, which was an amazing opportunity. I don't think I could ever have that opportunity anywhere else. Could I, could I just add one thing? Um, I, I took a few classes go across the street to so other schools outside of the, the business school, and I, I had great experiences. I just wanted to say that from a systems perspective, the, this works very well at Stanford. So it's very easy for you to take classes in other schools, regardless of which ones are your interests. If it's computer science or, you know, engineering or whatever it is, um, it's very easy to enroll in classes in other schools and most of the classes count towards uh, the credits for your degree. So it's, it's a very friendly system that encourages you to take classes in whatever fields of, of, of interest you may have. Okay, so Navelle would like to know, um, looking a little bit more about finances, um, how are you able to finance it? Anybody get any loans from the United States or have any financial aid? And what was that process like? I, I can go with that. Um, I, before I, I entered the GSP, I thought I couldn't do an, pursue an MBA because of the lack of financial resources. And I wasn't in spo sponsored by any company. So uh, it was the, the whole uh, admissions office and, and the team helped me a lot to understand that once you get uh, accepted, it, they want us to, to be there, so they will help us with getting loans. Uh, being international, it's it's okay. There are some providers that will help uh, give us loans, and it was super easy. Uh, and I'm glad I pursued this because I thought it was not possible going that uh, pursuing the MBA with all the financial resources before. But the admissions office uh, and the financial uh, office helped us a lot, and it was total totally possible. Thank you. Um, Helena, could you talk about, if this is in, in your situation, but could you talk about why you chose to apply to the GSB at all versus other top schools? Sure. Uh, well, I, I went to visit a lot of schools before I applied. And one thing that really, well, I, I actually got the, the atmosphere and the values and met the people uh, that were studying there. And it's funny enough, my husband went with me and he wasn't going to apply for an MBA. He was like, no, MBA, it's not for entrepreneurs. I think I don't need it. And when we got to the GSP, he looked at me and he's like, I'm going to be so pissed if I'm here for two years and I didn't even try to, to apply. And so he ended up applying as well and we both got in. But the main thing was the values. I think I really connected with the values there and with the people uh, who are there. They were very friendly and they, they invited me to see classes. I actually met Erica uh, there during that time and we are very good friends. Uh, and then I think it, it was amazing because I already had friends during my visit. So I think that that's the kind of people you are going to meet and the kind of people who 
will stay with you in your life for a very long time. Um, Thais, maybe you could take this one and um, Mauricio, you may also be able to jump in on this too, but could you talk a little bit about um, what the best communities, classes, professors, or experiences are for pursuing entrepreneurship or interested in pursuing entrepreneurship? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the one that I mentioned, the Startup Garage was really uh, important for me because, as I said, I was connected to mentors and also to uh, classmates that were interested in this uh, industry, in this ecosystem. Another one, another class that was really important was uh, Formation of New Ventures, which is a class that shows different paths to start a company. So starting from the idea, starting from the team, uh, starting from the problem. So it was uh, opened my mind a lot of different ways to start uh, uh, companies and thinking about different uh, communities there are uh, th there are different clubs in the in the school I was closer to the LASA club which is Latin America uh, student association so I was one of the co-presidents of this club and we did a lot of entrepreneurship things but for the region so it was really cool to be involved with uh, this with this club I, I really want to highlight the startup garage class i took it as well i took both semesters i took both quarters you you start uh trying to build the the product and the next quarter you actually have to have revenue on it and i, I still i still have the notes from that class and every time and it doesn't only apl apply to product it, it applies to a way of thinking that you can uh, use in any kind of in industry and i think it's really it's not a class it, it's it's an experience so i i really i agree with thais there um julianne i think you can help me because it's been a while i graduated 2013 it's been more than i'd like but um the one where eric schmidt teaches is it entrepreneurship and venture capital yeah okay so that that was I'll never forget that class because not only because of Eric Schmidt and then we got to have lunch with Eric Schmidt. It was only five people plus him. For those of you who don't know, Eric Schmidt is the former president of Google. Um, and but there was one day specifically where this young undergrad came to speak to us and the professor just said, yeah, he's launching an app. I don't know much about it, but people are talking about this kid. So he's coming to speak. And it was the founder of Snapchat. I forget his name now because again, it's been a while. But um, he was just talking about the app that he, this was 2012, I believe, maybe 2013. Um, the app that he was building that was getting a lot of traction at, at the university, blah, blah, blah. And I remember thinking, he, he thinks a lot, like, like, he seems a little bit cocky. But then I discovered that there was merit behind it, right? It became what Snapchat became. So that kind of stuff, I believe, does not happen in a lot of their MBAs, but it happens at Stanford. And then I agree about formation of new ventures. That, that, that was remarkable as well. Thank you. Just to add one more that I just remembered, it's managing growing enterprises. It's actually about the human relationships when your startup starts growing and a lot of different cases that, that will for sure happen and conflicts that will happen. So basically, the class is a role play uh, between all those conflicts and it's really hard to get out of some of them and to solve some of them. So I, I still use a lot. I always think what Grosbeck would do in that situation. Uh, he's one of the, was one of the first professors of MG. Um, Daniel, I'm gonna turn to you and kind of maybe building off of, of that train of thought. Um, Denise would like to know if you could expand a bit about what you share with your soft skill development um, and have you encountered situations after graduation where you've been able to apply what you learned with those soft skills? Yeah, absolutely. So just to give a few examples of classes that I took, um, I also took the public speaking class that Mauricio took at the engineering school, which is excellent. It gives you a lot of space to, to practice. I took a negotiations class at the law school and lawyers are excellent at negotiating. So it was lots of role plays and, and lots of simulation and that was very good. But I think for me, the most impactful class was um, interpersonal dynamics, um, best known as Tachi TV, which is probably the GSP's most uh, famous class. This is an elective that I think has existed for 50, 60 years. It's a, it's a very traditional class of the GSP. 
It's an elective that I think over 90% of the students of the GSP take. And basically the idea there is, is for you to um, become very, very close with a group of 10 or 12 students and really develop a culture of feedback there. So you're interacting with these people um, and then you're giving feedback on how your uh, interactions are affecting each other. It sounds a little weird and it's kind of weird to explain. It really works when you're in the classroom. And I think what's amazing about this class is you gain a level of transparency about how other people are actually feeling and, and reacting to your behavior that I think helps you build a lot of empathy for people. So I think now in my job and even in my daily life, uh, whenever I have an interaction with someone that doesn't go the way I expected, I think I have a lot more tools to take a step back and try and understand and empathize and see where they're coming from and why it might be that they are uh, behaving that way. So I think it gives you a lot of um, sensitivity for, uh, for interacting with others uh, in a way that would be very hard to develop if you weren't in this academic um, safe uh, space. And I, I wanna add something to that too. Um, when I was applying, a former boss in Itaú who was an executive director told me, remember you're leaving to become a better leader, not a better financial analyst. And that really resonated with me. And I ended up really picking the classes on that. I did the, I don't, I don't even know if they still have it, but I did the Arboco Fellowship Program, um, which was a program uh, that we learned to be um, better mentors and coach people. Um, we had to take the touchy feet class before everyone else was allowed to in the first year. And it took us, a, it, it was a lot of work for the first two quarters of the second year because we had to minister a class for the first quarter and then to mentor and coach three um, people to, to three students of the next class. But it was something that really, really helped me grow and develop. And I think it changed the way I did everything from there. I already, I was already a manager for, I don't know, around 10 or 12 people before I left. But when I came back, I grew very fast in the bank and I, I ended up having like 200 people. And I think those things also made me want to change to HR, right? Those things kind of um, showed me all different things and, and ended up in the end changing my career. Um, Eric, I'm actually gonna go back to you for this next question um, and then start with you and then anyone else who wants to join in, please do. Um, we'd like to know, Camilla would like to know a little bit more about the GSB network. So the question is, do you feel your GSB network is as strong outside of the United States as it is inside of the US? And can anyone provide an example of how the GSB network may have helped you get ahead in your career or your life? I dare to say it's, more, it's stronger for us here than it is in the US. <laughs> And I can give you tons of examples. Um, I do not do anything before talking to Mauricio here or Elena here. And I, know, and I can give you a bunch of like, I don't know, maybe 12 to 15 examples. I work with four other GSB, actually five, with like five other GSBers in the company I work with. Um, when I came back to Itaú and I decided to, to, to start Kubo, we, I, we, I had no idea what I was doing. No one had ever done that in, in anywhere else in the world. And I approach it as a, like everyone is saying here, the Starbucks garage thing, right? I'm starting a new business, so I need to start it and understand it. And I don't think if I, if I, I actually think that if I didn't, if I hadn't gone to the, to the just be, or met the people I met, I don't think I would have been able to do Kubo as it was. Because all those people I'm telling you, Mauricio, Elena, Eduardo Bayer, or Pedro, Elena's husband, I can give you, I don't know, 20 examples of people who helped me understand what I needed to do and to get where I needed to get. And I, I, need to, I needed to talk to investors, entrepreneurs, and a bunch of different people, academics and, and companies, and everyone helped me so much. Um, and when I left Itaú, like I talked to all these people, and we have entrepreneurs, we have people in big companies, we have people who founded companies. Um, and I talked to everyone to understand what I wanted to do, because I literally had no idea where to go to. Um, and I know I've talked to other people here too. I talked to Thais before she came as well. So we, we help each other so much that I can really, I can't even begin to explain how much we, it is, even, even, I mean, we're not a lot of people, but we're very close. And I think we help each other a lot. Um, and in the US it's, it's different, but it's amazing, right? If you, you would need something, in, when I was in Italy, that happened a lot. Like I need to understand this specific thing about payments. I know this company is good. Just, Go in the alumni book and find someone, just email in half an hour, the email is back, you know? 
And this is amazing. Um, so I don't know, I have, I can give you a hundred of examples. <laughs> I can give I, a very I, I, tangible <laughs> example. No. Sorry. I can give you a, a very tangible example that happened a month ago. So the company I work uh, with uh, did a $150 million donation for, to, to um, work with the, the COVID crisis. And I'm in the committee that says where we are going to invest that money. And uh, what happened here in Brazil was that there was a lack of supplies for hospitals, for example. Uh, well, in a lot of countries that happened, but we basically uh, had to fund research that was going in universities to, to find alternate alternatives for those kinds of supplies. And one um, uh, WhatsApp that I sent into our group, I got more than 50 um, initiatives in universities around Brazil, and we ended up investing in four of them and we also supplied other companies with other examples just because the network knew what was happening in the country and what kinds of research was happening and that was in like 15 minutes when i came back with with the answers to the committee they, they couldn't believe it like how <laughs> that happened so i think it, it's not only it, it's a will that people have to, they want to help you and they want to make, make sure that they got your back and vice versa. So uh, if someone asked me, you're only allowed to answer one thing that's good about Stanford. I think it would, it would be the community of the, and the alumni. I, I'm going to give like four quick examples. My first job after the MBA, uh, the, the Via Gogo company I mentioned was a Stanford founder. He wanted someone from Stanford to run Latin America. He emailed Fernando Gadotti, which is a friend of ours, and Fernando was at another startup. So he said, Mauricio is a good fit. I got the job. And then I decided to start Polanchi three years later. Um, three classmates of mine at Stanford had started startups in the used car space in the U.S. I called all three of them. They gave me insights and ideas and innovations about the car industry and if I should go into that space or not. And then I wanted to raise money. Uh, I've got a bunch of angels in the company. Close, you know, close to 20, I would say 80% of those people are just beers. Um, I'm an angel investment. I've got over 10 companies in the portfolio. 80% are GSP companies. Um, I wanted to raise VC money for Volanche. Guess who's on my board? Carlos Dapuzo, a GSP alum, who's at Monashis, and Hernan from Kazek, who's also a GSP alum. So, and then, and then I, and then people from Stanford, we tried to hire, et cetera. So I talked more to people from Stanford than I do any other circle in my life, social circle. Okay, so we have time for maybe one more question. Um, and this does tie kind of closely into this. Um, Daniel or Tace, you might want to start, but others are welcome to join. Um, there's a couple of questions about why you ultimately decided to return to Brazil versus staying in the United States. Um, if you could shed any light onto that thought process. Sure. Um, I think for me, there were two main reasons. I think the first one I already alluded to, but uh, in my second year, I co-organized a study trip to Brazil. Um, and at the time, I was frankly not 100% sure if I wanted to come back or stay abroad. And I think organizing this trip gave me access to the types of speakers and leaders and you know people who were influencing the direction of the country in a way that gave me insight to say, hey, actually, I think this is a very interesting moment to, to go back to Brazil. There's a lot going on that I think I could be uh, helping build and, and work on. Um, so organizing the trip helped me understand better what was happening in Brazil in a way that I wouldn't be able to without, without this opportunity. And, and that was very important. So I think that was one. And then second, I think it has to do with impact. I think uh, there's just so much to, to, to build and invest in and, and to help develop in Brazil that I think having a degree from Stanford and the connections and the learnings that come with it, um, I also felt a bit of a, a, a sense of responsibility to, to, to come back and, and try and do my part in helping the country uh, overcome its challenges. So I think these were the two main reasons. Yeah, I, I would totally echo that. I felt the need to, I was born and raised in Brazil and I felt the need to come back here and help uh, my country to to develop the, the ecosystem here. So it was really uh, clear for me that I had to go to come back to Brazil. 
And also like on the personal side, uh, my partner and family are here. So I thought also uh, it would make more sense to be close to, to them, so. And thank you to all our panelists for sharing your experiences and you know, just providing so much insight into what it was like and the, and the friendships that you built. I knew the alumni question would be very uh, close to home for the this Brazilian group. I know you have a very, very strong alumni network. I hope to see your application in future years. I hope to see you throughout the summer at other events. And just, I thank you so much for taking time to join us today to hear from our alums and to learn a little bit more about Stanford. Thank you all, take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.